Okay, so this is Dirk Mittler, and right now I'm just doing a bit of a sound check. I would like to introduce my, my viewers to the concept of material nodes in Blender, as well as to how to use a Blender extension called Lux Core in order to create a marbled texture, also known as a marbled material. Um, this is Blender 2.79b, and it is not the version of Blender that installs from the package manager. This is the version of Blender that I specifically downloaded from Blender.org for Linux, and it has fewer bugs than the version that we install from the package manager, which is important. Um, before I do anything else, I would just like to turn my mouse monitoring on so that if I click on my mouse buttons, the viewer will be able to see which mouse button I've just clicked on. So if I click on Escape, this little, this little widget here will show that I've clicked on Escape. I'm going to use the cube that displays by default in Blender to describe a little bit more what materials and textures do in general. So the cube I is automatically selected up here in the upper right hand corner of the Blender window, but there is a little spherical icon followed by a little red checker mark icon. The spherical icon indicates textures. We get to select what type of texture we would, sorry, the material icon selects materials. We get to select what type of material we would like to use. And the materials will have parameters. They'll have diffuse color, specular color, as well as a whole bunch of other parameters about about the, the shading of the surface. Whereas the texture is a two-dimensional image of values that could be colors, but that don't necessarily have to be colors. So in the regular Blender uh, panel on the right-hand side of the window, if we click on the red checkerboard um, icon, we get to choose a type of texture. And while a lot of emphasis takes place for textures that are images or movies, I'm going to focus on a texture that's did, uh, created entirely by an algorithm and that produces marbled appearance. When I click on this texture, a number of things happen by default in Blender. I get to see in the texture preview that there is a black and white pattern, a pattern of floating point numbers that are in monochrome. But I also see that this texture beautifully allows me to specify a vivid color right here un under, under default color. And um, what happens is that if I preview the material, the material accesses the texture. What the panel is already showing me is that the texture exists somewhere subordinated to the material. If I now select the material, the material preview is going to show me that, um, that it's like a marble pattern where the darker colors are replaced by purple. Now I can change the preview type so that it's not, not the same preview anymore. But of course, changing what type of preview I want for my materials has no effect whatsoever on the scene that I'm creating over here in the center of my, of, of, my, uh, of my playground. Now, if we could just assume that this works for a moment, I'm going to give you a situation where this does not seem to work as clearly, which is when we use the Lux Core rendering system. Lux Core is a special rendering add-on that we can install to Blender. And uh, what we find under Lux Core is that we have a, uh, I just selected it, we have a different set of settings. So under Lux Core, we get to choose whether to render our scene on the CPU or op using OpenCL. If we use OpenCL to render our scene with Lux Core, the rendering will be done on the GPU and not on the CPU. But what's very important with Lux Core is that we define a halt condition as our part of our rendering sessions. And I'm just going to decide that every Lux Core rendering session that I do is going to last for a maximum of 20 seconds. So that after 20 seconds, Lux Core will be satisfied with the quality of the result and will not continue running on, this, on the GPU. Now, when we use Lux Core in order to create a, 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 in order to render a model with the intention of it having a material, we'll discover that we don't have as many options as we used to have 
with the built-in render for, 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 for Blender. We have a bunch of presets, we have a preview, but the preview is already telling us, first of all, we have to choose a material. But if, if we choose as material glossy, the preview updates, and we see that the texture image that I just selected before is not being used in order to create the, the material preview. And so in order to rectify that problem, since materials need texture images as a source of information to be useful, um, we're going to have to do a little bit more work with LuxCore before we can get a, um, a, a properly textured view and so the, a properly textured model. And so I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the node editor on the left hand side of my Blender panel and you'll, we'll see that it's empty even though I selected the glossy material. And that's because with LuxCore we actually have to click on show nodes right here in the right hand panel so that it will show us a node representation of the material. Uh, so we have a master output and we have a glossy material and what's on the left hand side of these rectangles are the inputs. If I choose the, the master output, not only do I have a rectangle to show me how this node is connected, but what's written in this rectangle is also produced in this sidebar and we'll see that we have inputs and, and the inputs except for material are there are some unconnected inputs but the main input is called material so the mid if we click on material it's going to show us that we have more inputs and that includes a diffuse color a specular color an absorption color and none of them are connected so the tempting thing to do in a node editor is to say well i'm going to take and texture and i'm going to use the blender built-in texture that's called marble and i'm simply going to I'm simply going to, to wait, wait a second, marble, here it is. I'm going to use the marble texture that, that Blender supplies in the node editor. I'm going to insert it into my scene. I'm going to do the following thing wrong. I'm going to take the color that comes out of the marble editor and I'm going to f feed it to the diffuse color of my material. So I have a glossy material and the diffuse color that I've just connected to it was generated by the marble texture that that's blender supplied and that's not Luxray supplied and what I'm going to do is I'm going to render this scene and the, the my viewer will see immediately that there's something wrong with what I've done because we didn't quite get the results that we want I already know this but well let's let's just do this it's going to render for 20 seconds and once it renders we see that all we get on the surface of our cube is we get a, a variation between bright and dark. We get white and black perhaps, if you want to call it white and black. But of course what anybody would want a marble texture to do is they would want it to have color, not just black and white. I mean there exist types of marble in the real world um, that are different shades of gray but what we wanted was the type of marble texture that we're used to with Blender that, that goes between white and some arbitrarily chosen color. And so I'm going to show a simple little trick that just exemplifies what we can do with a material node editor to obtain what, what I would want and what I'm assuming most people would want. I'm going to c uh, cut this connection that I made by holding down the control key, by holding down the control key and uh, severing the connection that I just made and I'm going to add something else to the node preview. Under the node preview we have possible outputs, there's only one kind, but there's something called utilities here and one of the utilities that we have under the um, under the um, under the node tree is we have the ability to uh, called color mix. We can mix two colors together with a different type of node that performs a mathematical operation. And if I select color mix, I've got this node. And um, because the node is selected, its, its properties are also magnified in the si sidebar over here. And we have different modes for mixing two colors together. So right now it simply says mix, but we uh, what what exactly does mix mean? Well, um, 
mix is different from multiply, add, or subtract. If we multiply two colors together, it's pretty clear what would happen. We'd get a variation between black and whatever the chosen color is. But I'm going to stay with mix, and I'm going to observe that one of the inputs is a floating point number between 0 and 1, whereas the other two inputs are two colors. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the color output of my um, of of my of of my uh, marble texture to the floating point value that gets used as an input, and the reason I'm allowed to do that is because the texture output of this node was in monochrome. So because it was a monochrome output, it, it can also be used as a varying floating point number that goes between zero and one. And while I'm going to ch leave color one unchanged, I'm going to change color two to something that suits me. I've, I've, I'm going to actually do this in the, in the larger view where I get a better resolution. Um, right now it has red, green, and blue values that are all fractions. I'm going to replace them. I'm going to say that red is zero for the sake of argument that green is going to be zero. And I'm going to say for the sake of argument that blue is actually going to be one. So blue is going to be at maximum intensity and maximum purity as well. And uh, that's going to be it for color two. And what will happen now is that the floating point number that I specified, which is no longer being displayed because it's coming from another node. As soon as you, you define one of these inputs from another node, you don't get to define it in the sidebar. This floating point number is going to, de is going to decide to what degree color one de replaces color two. And the colors that come out of this, I'm going to feed into the diffuse color of my material again, because by default, that's the color we want to control. Um, so again, because I've connected it to a node, the diffuse color is no longer visible as a single color that I could choose. But now what I can do is I can tell the, um, the Lux Core rendering engine, which is still selected in the right-hand side panel, I can tell it to render this scene again. And with any luck, I'll get what I was planning for. I'll get to render the scene. See, and already I, I obtained the effect that I wanted. Where the, um, where the uh, input texture was dark, color 2 prevails. Where the input texture was light or bright, color 1 prevails. And what I have here is I have a cube, the coloration of which changes between two of its inputs, but changes between the two input colors. And uh, that's ultimately the, that was ultimately the purpose of the exercise. But of course, because we have a node editor that's potentially very versatile, we could supply other types of colors to this mixing node. Instead of sim simply supplying the constant color white and the constant color blue, we could take those colors from yet another node. We could even put a, an image map into our project that uses a photograph as a source of colors. And the mixing node would d then decide on a pixel by pixel basis um, which of the two input colors to prefer between the two in a continuously variable way. Right now, I just used white and blue. So pretty much that ends my exercise. I just wanted to, sh to show this to people. So this is how a material node editor in general works. And let's see if I can find my, my image editor again. This is the final rendered result. It looks pretty much the way the original ren Blender built-in marble texture would look. So that, that's, that's, that finishes my, my video. Thank you very much for, for listening.